Well, good afternoon. Again, my name is Joe Montoya. I am the Division Chief of Investigations for the Denver Police Department. Uh, I'm going to break down uh, chronologically uh, the investigation, and then we'll open up for questions when we're done. Uh, at approximately 4.30 on Monday, August 6th, uh, the Denver Police Communications Center received a call from a, the family member regarding Jordan Vong, a missing seven-year-old from the 4900 block of Fair Play Street. The family had last uh, reported seeing him at 2.40 p.m. on that date. Uh, Denver police officers responded to the scene. They arrived at approximately 4.45 p.m. They did a cursory search of the house uh, looking for the child. Generally in these type of cases, we were looking for the child uh, with the hopes that they're hiding or playing a game. So the cursory search is to rule out that the, the child is in the home. Uh, after not locating the child, they followed protocol and called uh, members of the Missing and Exploited Persons Unit. A sergeant and detective responded out to the scene and took control of the investigation at that point. A secondary search, cursory search, was done. Uh, knowing that if the child was not located that there's going to be a very expansive investigation that follows to include multiple resources. They wanted to rule out that the child was not hiding in the home, uh, gave it a second uh, search to be thorough. After not finding the child, um, they expanded the, the investigation beyond the home. We utilized several resources at that point. We utilized the uh, reverse 911, which reached a one mile radius in 600 homes to share the information on this child with the hopes that maybe somebody would spot him in the neighborhood. Uh, we used the social media push to get the picture and uh, descriptors of the child out to the community. Um, we used the news media, and thank you for the, the timely response and getting that information out to the public for us. Um, we used the Air One helicopter unit to come in and do an aerial search for us of the surrounding neighborhoods, uh, any open space areas and uh, bodies of water. Uh, we incorporated uh, the, the, the help of the Safe Streets Task Force. It's an FBI-based task force. We needed the additional resources to come in and assist with what the, the follow-up uh, search that was going to happen, which was uh, a 20, 20 block radius grid search and uh, canvas of the neighborhood. So they, they sent out several resources to assist us with that process. Another option that obviously was considered on the front end of this was the Amber Alert. We, uh, we discussed it, and then we also touched base with CBI, who are the experts in the Amber Alert criteria, to discuss what we had. At the time, we had no immediate evidence that uh, Jordan had been abducted, so it was determined at that time that we did not meet the criteria for an Amber Alert. However, they did uh, put out an endangered missing child alert for us, which is uh, an information push that goes out to local law enforcement. Throughout the course of the investigation, it was, in term, it was determined that a more thorough search of the residence was necessary, and therefore we obtained a search warrant to re-enter the home. At approximately 8.20 p.m. Tuesday night, officers of the Denver Police Department went in and searched the home. Approximately 30 minutes into the search, sadly, we found Jordan deceased. Um, his body was uh, intentionally concealed. Last night, we announced that the child's uh, case had become a death investigation. And after further investigation throughout the night, evidence was discovered. And this morning, uh, detectives uh, took a 16-year-old female into custody for investigation of first-degree murder. Since the child is a juvenile, law uh, forbids me from discussing any more about her, her relationship to Jordan or other specifics about the case. The coroner's office will determine the cause of death, and the district attorney's office will make the final determination on charges. Um, is there any questions at this point? Joe, yesterday you had to go in with a search warrant. Uh, we reported that the family was not cooperating to the level you wanted or you wouldn't have needed the search warrant. What was the pushback from the family? Well, the family was, was um, the family was concerned and they were cooperative to a point. I can't, I can't expand upon that because it is part of the active investigation. 
Can you explain where you found him and how the body has been concealed? I, I, I cannot. I can only uh, state that the body was found in the home. I can't uh, disclose where it was found or the condition of the body when it was found. Explain why when you did the search originally on Monday, you didn't find the body and you mentioned that it was concealed. Can you provide right. more details? The, the intent of going in on the cursory search is we don't go in the intent of thinking the child's been harmed or uh, worst case scenario is dead. Uh, we go in with the hope that the child is hiding, playing a game. So it's, it's more of a cursory search. You don't get as intrusive with the search at that point. Um, so that, that would explain why we didn't, we didn't find the body. It was intentionally concealed, and it took some, um, it took some, some, some searching to find it during the, the actual search warrant. Did you say there was two early searches in the house? Yes. So two cursory searches. Two cursory searches. One uh, uh, initiated by the patrol officers on scene, and the second by the investigative team on the scene. You said Jordan was last seen around 2.30 on Monday, so it's your that's, yeah. by Monday, Tuesday? Again, I can't disclose that. That is part of the active investigation. He was last reported by the family as being seen at 2.40 p.m. Can you say that the boy's body was found in the crawl space? I cannot. You, uh, can you talk about the potential cause of death, the strangulation? I cannot disclose any of that at this point. The facts don't logically line up. The family calls and says he's missing, but yet somehow they don't think you're going to search the house or ask ask to look. Can you help us connect some dots? I, it kind of doesn't make sense. It, again, that that's you know part of the the overall development of, of facts that led to the search warrant. That's all part of the consideration. I can't speak to the mindset of the family or why or how they communicated things to us at this point, because it is all part of our active investigation. Those two cursory searches, those were done on Monday night or Tuesday morning? It would have been Monday afternoon. You said you've picked up a 16-year-old. Are there chances others may face charges, the family members, the parents? At, the, at this point, we are develop, still developing information. The case is still active. In fact, we're still working portions of it as we speak. So I cannot uh, speak to whether or not we are going to be looking at additional suspects at this time. Does the juvenile have any priors? I can't disclose any of the background information on the juvenile at this time. And you said it was a female. Yes. Is it a sister? I can't disclose any uh, familiar relations. Have there been any other police calls to this house or any child welfare calls to this house? Again, the, the uh, part of the uh, investigation is the, the premise history on the home, which is always taken into consideration in these cases. So. Uh, I won't be able to disclose any of that at this point. Are you worried about any other, I don't know if there's any other kids in that home now or any other, is that a concern to police, anybody else living in that home at this moment? Well, it's always a consideration, and I think uh, Department of Human Services, uh, Victim Services will probably be involved in the evaluation of that with any other children in the home. Can you say for other children in the home? I cannot at this time. Joe, this is your first major case in your mm -hmm. new position. Can yes. you talk to me about the difficulty of what you discovered, the, the investigation, personalize it a bit? Well, first and foremost, I want to say that I came away extremely impressed with the dedication of, of the, the police personnel, law enforcement personnel involved in this. Um, I saw first close, firsthand how invested they were into trying to find this child. And, of course, it was our, our hope that this child would be found safe and alive somewhere. Um, there, I can say that there were investigators that probably went 48 hours without sleep that stayed dedicated and focused on this case. I would say that the, the amount of concern and investment from the community and the media was very encouraging because I think everybody wanted the, the same conclusion on this. Um, once this came to the, the sad conclusion that it did, the, the emotional drain is very intense. I, um, I, I felt it myself and I know that the investigators themselves felt it. and. Uh, I would say just just seeing the the up close emotion involved in in this and the roller coaster ride that you go through in a in a forty hour a forty eight hour span of of this type of investigation, especially involving a child, um, it's it's eye opening. It really is. I want to go back to the search if we could. Cause okay. I know you mentioned you went once and there was a second cursory uh, search. Why, given that officers had been in and out of the home all day? Was it required then to get a search warrant? Can you just kind of explain what people think that's understood? Well, as, as information develops, initially you're, you're dealing with a missing child investigation. 
as information develops, then if if you're looking at the potential of it turning into a, a, a higher level investigation, potentially criminal, then you you need the legalities of the search warrant to go in and to maintain the integrity of the case and to present the best product, investigative product, to the DA's office because they're the ones that are now tasked with moving this forward through the judicial system. So, Can you elaborate at all, like just what kind of information turned from missing to now we're seeing this as more criminally involved? I can't get into the specifics. I can allude to what, uh, is, is, are you Mr. Selinger? Is, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony. What he alluded to, there there are a lot of pieces that just don't add up. And as as we start looking harder at those pieces and then you pick up different information and it starts to accumulate, then you realize, okay, then we need to kind of take a turn and, and this has to start going in a different direction than what it is right now. You know, on the front end, you want to handle it as a missing child and every every bit of your, your uh, energy is going into finding this child. And then you get to a point where you determine, okay, it's time to, to start taking a different look and a different perspective on this. For the need of the search warrant, would then it be that the family or the parents were reluctant to let officers search in nooks and crannies or other places, or was it? I won't be able to, okay. to disclose that right now. Can you tell us right what now. grounds you used to obtain the search warrant? Do you have to present some evidence right. to a judge saying, Get it, it was a, it was just an accumulation of all the uh, evidence and um, facts that we were putting together through this uh, extensive uh, investigation. Why was the FBI involved? In the They're part of the Safe Streets Task Force. Uh, one of their secondary, um, uh, I don't want to say missions, but their responsibilities is missing children. So they they have different responsibilities. We, we, um, they're actually in close proximity. They're based close proximity to where this occurred. So the, it was a natural call to ask them because they have, they have a wide, a big body of resources and we needed resources in a timely manner to get out there and start doing this grid search. So we, we brought them in. Is it accurate to conclude the family denied DVD access requiring you to go get the search warrant? I, I can't disclose that fact. I can't. Can you describe the family's level? The family was concerned and they were cooperating. Um, I, I, can't, I can't expand it to, to the level of cooperation. They were cooperate, cooperating and they were concerned. But I, I can't expand upon that because a lot of it is part of the integral part of the investigation. And are they still cooperating with me now? To my, to my knowledge, they are. Can yeah. you share the reaction when the body was discovered? I cannot. Um, I, I would say there was some natural, natural reactions, human reactions to, you know, knowing that the, the child was discovered deceased. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.